consciousness is fundamental. That means it is more fundamental than the physical world. The physical world emerges somehow out of consciousness. Given that we're at least partially physical creatures that, that, that are, have some kind of consciousness, we're self-aware, it becomes extremely difficult. We cannot step outside of, of where and who we are. You'd kind of need, you know, like you need to jump out of the universe and look back on it. Well, we don't know how to do that yet. Just looking at the relationship between consciousness and matter, mind-matter interaction, psychokinetic effects. It's extremely difficult to understand how that works from a materialistic perspective. It's also kind of difficult to figure out from a from an idealist perspective because in idealism, essentially there is no physical world. It's it's all like a construct. So you need both somehow, and then look at the interactions between them. And we see effects. A, a lot of people, including here, are doing uh, spoon bending things. So here's one that I bent. And I was only interested in this particular kind of bend because it's extremely difficult to do by force. And, and I did it myself. And I, it's important because it opens two doorways that we didn't have before with classical physics. It's the doorway of non-locality, which is important, and also the doorway that something about observation makes a difference. So those are both important. But quantum mechanics, as we currently understand it, is not the end of physics. It's the beginning of physics. And quantum mechanics, and in, in maybe it's next uh, iteration, or maybe beyond that, is almost certainly going to have to have consciousness as part of the equation. Physicists today are very resistant that idea, that idea, because suddenly they, they they can't just do physics. They also have to think about philosophy and psychology and everything. They don't like that. But something like that is, is going to be necessary in order to make a big advancement in physics. And I know plenty of physicists who are working on this issue quietly. Now creating what amounts to a virtual lab where, uh, and maybe working with HeartMath and maybe with the Monroe Institute, to create a way of doing physiological tests where we would mail people the equipment and then we get real-time data streaming over the internet so that we'd be able to do these kinds of remote experiments and among other things attract people who may have talent that would never be able to come to our lab so we're moving more and more into a virtual space simply because it's so much more efficient and much much cheaper so when i get a download it's almost always through dreams because I don't remember my dreams too much. But if I do remember a dream, I pay very close attention to it. And if it's a dream, if I'm working on a problem, I will oftentimes get what seems like a solution, or at least an answer, in the dream. And if I then actually act on it, and I'm, these are usually analytical things having to do with processing data, it's almost always right. And the thing is, if I get it in a dream, I know it's going to work. Like, you know, that, that's the, I, the word noetic means a kind of intuition where you have certainty that it's true. And so I get those dreams and then I'll do the experiment and sure enough, it works just the way that I thought it would work. The idea of, uh, let's say you wanted to do affirmations to make a gold-plated Mercedes show up in your driveway. So, you know, every time you think about something, even in a casual sense, uh, I believe that it is pushing probabilities of the world around. You know, think of now versus tomorrow. There's a million, like a big branching probabilistic structure that gets us from here to there. Lots of decisions are being made along the way. If you're able to navigate through that branching structure in, a, in an intelligent way where you know what's, what's happening, you can like feel the future effects, you can navigate yourself into a place where all kinds of miraculous things are happening. This, this decision tree that's happening all along the way if you're not aware of, of the decisions that you're making, you're going to more or less move through this probabilistic structure th through whatever the strongest current is. So the metaphor I use is like you're, we're all floating on a stream that has a certain very strong current in it. And if you're on a little boat in that stream and you're not trying to do anything, you're going to be dragged along with the current. And the current happens to be going over a waterfall, you're going to go over a waterfall. If you're able to, to think about this as more of a probabilistic state, then you have a little paddle in your boat and you can sense that you don't want to go over the waterfall over there. Well, you start paddling and you can slowly pull yourself out of the mainstream, literally, and cause yourself to end up somewhere else 
Well, that requires a certain degree of awareness of where you are and where you're likely to end up. So I think what affirmations are doing is forcing you to pay attention to each decision along the way and steering yourself into the future that you actually want because it's not fixed. But what this, well, you know, you, you probably could get a gold-plated Mercedes and sure enough in the mail shows up this. This is a gold-plated Mercedes. It's actually, it's a little car that's a Mercedes that the doors open and the wheels turn and everything and it's gold. Uh, and so she, I, I wrote back and said, I go, that this is a great thing, thank you. And she said, well, it's just a, as an illustration that if you're not completely clear on what it is that you want, you can get a gold-plated Mercedes, but that's not exactly what I had in mind.